God bless you, family. King Jesus bless you guys tonight. Revelation 18.23 And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Now, talking about the doom of Babylon uh, in Revelation here, and by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. So I see a headline earlier today on End Time Headlines. Pastor John MacArthur causes firestorm of reactions after saying there is no such thing as mental illness and calls PTSD grief. This was intriguing reading this. Many of us may have struggled with depression, anxiety, and to hear this from a pastor who's been a solid um, creature of God's word for many years uh, is interesting. So, so I read this article one in 25 U.S. adults lives with serious mental illness, etc., etc. Okay. And he goes on to speak about how the current culture is now targeting children to trap them in sin. Homosexuals say we are coming after your kids. They're not trying to protect them, but targeting them in the schools. They're targeting them through the media. Disney and companies like that, yeah, they're grooming children as, as well. The war is on children. Uh, MacArthur asserted that the increased diagnosis of children with mental illness today is not teaching them personal responsibility and medicating them for these illnesses only turns them into drug addicts and potentially criminals. And he, he finishes this article here. He's quoted, Quote, I was reading a book, an interesting book, called A Profession Without Reason. It's a book that shows, basically, this is pretty shocking to some of you, that psychiatry and psychology is finally admitting the noble lies they've been telling for the last 100 years. Okay, so what's the tie-in with Revelation 18.23? <clears throat> well, in the Greek, the word for a sorcery, or witchcraft is pharmakia, okay? Uh, talking a little bit here from BibleRef.com that fleshed out just a paragraph here <clears throat> uh, regarding this verse. This verse implies that Babylon was a city of sorcery. The Greek word for sorcery is pharmakia, from which we derive the word pharmacy. Most likely, the sorcery of end times Babylon will include drug production and trafficking, substances such as illicit drugs control and enslave people, making them easier to manipulate. Okay, all versions of sorcery will be ended when God destroys Babylon. So it made me think, like, what if the, quote, mental illness is, uh, is, is not necessarily something that needs a pharmaceutical? Um, and like Pastor MacArthur said in this article... Uh, he's talking about, not so much that it's mental illness, but, um, sorry guys, let me find what I was reading on that. Oh, where was it? I'm not finding it exactly, but, oh, I think I was writing the title. Yeah, calling it grief. What if it's more just, uh, you know, grief we have to get through? I think of like King David and other people from scripture who are going through it. Um, you know, it doesn't talk about them making a concoction, a, a medication. <clears throat> they were grieving and, and they were they were they were sore grieved for a period of time. But uh, you know, even that grief we go through and, and the, whatever it's anxiety or depression, what if these are just kind of like uh, lights on the dashboard of like a car? They tell you something's up; it needs to be looked at and checked out. I kind of like what he says because just think if you're someone who says, "Oh." I, I have depression, I have bipolar or something, and uh, you just kind of accept it, and um, then you're taking a pharmaceutical probably, for you know, paying big pharma, taking these pharmaceuticals, sorcery, witchcraft, who knows what kind of synthetic things they put in there, who knows if they're maybe praying over the whole batch of pills, you know, and you could be um, intermingling with just, just something weird, you know. But anyways, when you say you have a condition, like you kind of take that as part of identity. 
Um, I know when I was like a 16 year old kid, I was getting in trouble and stuff. <clears throat> and they diagnosed me with like um, depression. And then I was on a pharmaceutical right away. And I tell you what, I felt weird being on those things. And when I got off it, I felt weird coming off them too, man. It was weird. But um, anyways, especially as believers in Jesus, we are born again. We are new creatures in Christ, new creations. Um, I like I like what he's talking about here. It gives people more kind of ownership for what are you going through. And whatever you're going through, whether it was trauma put upon you, something you've gone through, a hardship, a loss, and you're really in that valley. We've all been there. Um, I think that can be a great opportunity to hug the cactus to uh, get through it and come out you know, shining, refined through the furnace. So, I don't know, what if taking these pharmaceuticals could um, dampen that experience? Like King Jesus on the cross, they offered him the gall mixture to deaden his pain as he was suffering. He tasted it. He's like, no, I don't want it. I want to be sober to face my struggle, my anxiety, my depression. Sure enough, King Jesus was feeling those kinds of things while he was on the cross. So... I, t I turn us back again to Revelation, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. We see a lot of people acting weird, like like zombies, like losing their minds. And, and who knows if it's in the, the pharmacia, uh, you know, making marijuana legal in a lot of places. Who knows what they're cutting that with and or people vaping on different types of substances. Who knows what's in there and what's been cursed over those products. But people are acting like we've never really seen, I've never seen in this country. Um, and what if it's the pharmacia? And we know about, from God's word, uh, Revelation 18, that that's going to be a huge thing. All the nations, the scripture says, by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. So pharmacia is a, an agent and a tool for deception. Makes people easier to control illicit drugs control and enslave people, making them easier to manipulate. So it seems as if these devils uh, in the world are already getting their repetitions in right now by pushing a lot of drugs, pharmaceuticals, for decades really with these type of, quote, medical illness um, conditions. Now, of course, I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving medical advice. I am someone who's had depression before, but I'm also a man who's reading God's word and seeing how the pharmacia is uh, is the witchcraft, is the sorcery. And we get words for our drugs from that word. That's, uh, that's interesting. So you guys pray the Holy Spirit, especially if you're taking any of this stuff. And uh, see if there might be alternate ways to also seek to deal with any condition. You seek out a trusted brother. Uh, Proverbs, I believe, says with the counsel of like um, one or two, you know, if you if you take wise counsel in a few people like uh, I can't remember exactly how it says but like uh, you'll, you'll be blessed for doing it it's a wise thing to do I like Pastor MacArthur I like what he has to say here so I wanted to share my piece on that okay guys and to close I wanted to say so Kim and I we uh, I said to her I want let's praise the Lord tonight let's let's sing a song of worship and praise so we both picked a song put it up on on the big screen TV with lyrics and we praise the Lord, and then we pray before and after. I always think of Second Chronicles, um, Second Chronicles twenty, King Jehoshaphat. He, he did the same thing. Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. I shared this with a good brother in Christ yesterday, and uh, it struck him. And actually, let's jump to uh, Second Chronicles twenty real quick here, guys. And I was, I'll point out a few things I saw. So there's a, there's a massive army against King Jehoshaphat and God's people, and they don't know what to do. Uh, so Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in front of everyone. Uh, he gathered everyone together. He proclaimed a fast. Okay, so that was pretty good. Uh, they started praising the Lord. And uh, the Lord, uh, who was it? This guy, by the word of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord came upon this Jehaziel, okay, he spoke, do not be afraid, this is the word of the Lord, or be discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's, okay, so he said, tomorrow go up, so we still need to go out there against anything, uh, these, these um, odds that might look really tough, 
Uh, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow. Let's show up to those things in our life. And the Lord will be with you. And remember, you will not have to fight this battle. Um, for the battle is not yours, but the Lord's, but God's. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And there's another section that always kind of struck me. A couple things we always praise because miraculous things can happen when we praise the Lord. And um, another thing King Jehoshaphat said was, Lord, we do not know what to do. I'm going to find that here. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Second Chronicles 20, 12. So I exhort you guys going forth here, whatever you are facing, if you don't know what to do, if you do and you're scared, whatever, your eyes are on the Lord. You're Peter walking on the water. You don't look at the waves and the wind. You focus on King Jesus. Okay, then the Lord here in Second Chronicles 20, he, he intervened. He slaughtered the army, turned them against each other. Three days, God's people were going back, getting all the, um, all the loot, all the stuff they had, right? So that's, that's what we're going to learn here. We're going to seek the Lord. We're going to praise Him. Our eyes are going to be fixed on Jesus. We're going to integrate fasting. That was one of the first things in this chapter that also um, He proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. Yeah. And the people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. You and your brethren, you come together, you seek the Lord. Yeah, awesome. And then so when we do those types of things and our eyes are on the Lord, we don't know what to do, but we're focused on Him. Uh, he'll do the miraculous. The Lord does the heavy lifting. The battle is not ours, it's the Lord's. That's a word for somebody out there. That was a word for my brother Greg yesterday. And as I think more about it, I'm like, all right, cool, that's good. That burden is light, that yoke is easy uh, of Christ Jesus. So let Jesus do the heavy heavy lifting, like uh, the quarterback giving the ball to the strong running back who, you know, let him do that dirty work and take it up the hole and go get a touchdown for the football analogy. All right, guys, I hope that blesses you. Definitely wanted to share that. So if you have any mental illness things or loved ones who do, um, consider these alternate ways, the wise counsel, prayer, fasting, um, pharmaceuticals and big pharma. We know we can't trust a lot of government type entities and big businesses so we got to be careful with that stuff pharmacia sorcery and witchcraft let's go to the pharmacy let's get some pharmaceuticals uh, let's be careful with that all right guys thanks for watching my video i appreciate it please do hit the thumbs up and please share my video i'll see you next time god bless you